Get your tickets now at curling.ca.
everybody, welcome to the final of the Allie Jenkins Mixed Doubles Memorial. I have uh, Dean Grindham with me here. He's going to help me out. Uh, we have Rana Rana playing Epping Weagle in the final. Super exciting. Um, it was also exciting news earlier today for Weagle and Epping. They winning the uh, semifinal game has put them in a Olympic trial spot. So they are super excited about that. They'll be in uh, Portage for the Olympic trials in December. I think Weagle Epping have Hammer here, I believe. And uh, they were both 4-1 uh, and one out of the round robin. So they did a LSD playoff for the uh, Hammer for this end. And I believe uh, Weagle and Epping won the Hammer. I think you're correct. Yeah. And actually, they're both out of the same pool and during pool play. Oh, really? I yeah, they both. They, so they played each other once already. I'm not quite sure who won that game, but they ended up tied in their pool. Both the, both teams were four and one in their pool. Oh, okay. So it looks like he's going to try the double here. Trying to sit three and put some pressure on. So those of you who don't aren't aren't familiar with mixed doubles, uh, the rocks are preset from the beginning to the end. Oh, just missed the double there. Still left a tough shot for uh, John. So at the beginning of the end, the team with hammer would have set their rock at the back forefoot, and the uh, team without hammer would have a rock preset on the center line just a few feet above the house. And then each team throws uh, uh, five rocks. So in this case, Lisa's throwing first and last, and John's throwing the middle three. And uh, same situation for Rana Rana. The, uh, Isabella's throwing first and last, and uh, Rasmus is throwing uh, the middle three. One difference from regular curling is even the first five rocks of the end, if they're in the house, cannot be taken out. Exactly. So um, if you have Hammer, um, your middle uh, thrower, his first rock, he can throw a hit. So there'll already be five rocks in the lane before you Looks like he's trying for a big, big hit here. Hopefully at least get two moving. Line looks pretty good. Not as good as he was going to make that, I think. And then also just a different role with mixed doubles is um, if they want to, they could switch throwers. So Lisa could throw middle three at any point during the game. They would just uh, set that up right at the beginning of the end. throughout the game we'll see a power play used which will explain that as they as they go to use it yeah exactly so some teams use power play for offensive some uh, use it for defensive so we'll see when it comes out here and we'll explain that as Dean said when it comes up what are you thinking here Dean is he going to play the double or that was my first thought they were going to try a double but I'm wondering might I didn't really see they might be just trying to play three yeah so this is last rock for Rana Rana so they might Try a freeze tab here to sit three. Let's see if we can figure it out with her delivery. Looks like freeze, freeze tab. I think. I heard lots of good comments from the curlers about how nice the ice was. And they all really enjoyed the event. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. We we played and played a couple games here in Martinsville, a couple games in Sutherland, and both both clubs were excellent ice. So shout out to the ice makers there. Just did an excellent job. Okay, so I think they're sitting three there. This is a high pressure shot in the first end for a draw against three. It might look fairly routine because you've seen this path, but it's always a little extra pressure when you're drawn against multiple points. She needs a good one here.
John's really working it. Looks pretty close though. Uh oh. She's light. No, she's light. Ooh, that's a tough three there. Three blue in the first end. She might have had to go out a little bit wider just because of that center one and just getting a slightly different path with mixed doubles. You don't in the LSDs with men's and women's you see them work the ice quite a bit more, so a lot more paths get cleared. And with mixed doubles you're really concentrating on that LSD and you really just have those couple of rocks in that one path. And so if you have to go out even four or five inches wider, it's just so different. Um, Get your tickets now at curling.ca. Okay, welcome back to Martinsville Curling Rink. It's Ron's stole, stole three in the first end off legal and epic. We're just starting playing the second end. Yeah, so uh, Lisa had a draw against three there to try to get one and just got out in a newer path, it looked like. And short so tough top three to give up there but mixed doubles is a long game so a lot of game left here and as we talked before there's always lots of rocks in play and there's lots of sometimes you some pretty big ends scored exactly it's uh it's my favorite thing about mixed doubles um when you're playing it and watching it it's never over so i've seen i've given up six in the last end and i've scored five in the last end to come back from what was a completely dominant to the other team so they are dominating and we'll come back and have a good eight then. Just never say die in mixed doubles. So these guys will just want to keep keep putting the pressure on and see if they can get a break. So as we said, we have uh, Lisa Weagle and John Epping playing here against Rana Rana. So Lisa plays with uh, Jennifer Jones and John skips his own team out of Ontario. And uh, Rana is uh, Isabella Rana skips her own team as well out of Sweden and uh, of course uh, Rasmus plays with uh, Nicholas Adin and uh, most of you curling fans know that team so very good team very good uh, individual players here as well as mixed doubles teams so we had uh, we had uh, 36 teams come in to start this event, so we did six pools of six, and uh, came down, we had 12 teams qualify, and all the teams that got through were at least, uh, only had one loss, so four wins, so it was, it was an excellent week for those teams. Oh, I just heard a rumor that... Uh, might have Oscar come down and do some commentating with us here, Dean. We might have to go poke him. <laughs> might need a little persuasion. Yeah. There's lots of, lots of rocks in play around the forefoot. Yeah, a lot of freeze, freeze tap, set up the angle. If the angle's not right, just try to jiggle the angle. If they wanted to, now they can start hitting. Because as you see, five rocks that are in play. Or five rocks that have either been the two placed and the three thrown rocks. Exactly. So I'm not sure we're going to see the bail point here with John yet, just because they're down three. So they might just try just to rearrange the angles, as we just talked about. So he could maybe try to get to three quarters inside on that rock and tap back his own just so it's out of, out of the way. Um, so that he can play a hit on it later. It's a very, very patient game. So also, I find in playing the game, <coughs> my heart's just going right from the first end to the last end because even in the first end, you're thinking, oh, am I going to get three or give up three or four or five? <laughs> and the ends and next levels seem to just build up real quick compared to regular curling. Exactly. Yeah. That was a good shot there. I think you, you might have been hoping to try to get inside, but 
still puts the pressure on uh, Rasmus to make a good one here. Looks like blue is still shot though. Inside nose here, that would be a great shot. Just a, sh just a shout out here as well to um, Jerry and Jerry Gertz and John for the Curling Stadium, and things are going quite well. But we definitely have uh, a lot of help over here with from James, who's doing some technical work in the background for us. Oh, that was a great shot. Just inside nose. Just a great shot. I think John might have to bail here with the run. Kind of hope they have some good angles. they got to make sure they can at least score one here. Obviously, they'd like to get a multiple, but... this point, the way the angles are set up for Rana Rana, it's uh, just making sure they score here will be big for John and Lisa. I expect he's got it. Yeah, I think so. Maybe not. I guess if you can get in on top of that one still in the back four, still shot rocking. right on the face. They don't even necessarily have to get shot. So again, they probably don't mind giving up one, but if they can get shot rock also, shot rock also that'd be huge for them. This one it must be close. It's over curling, I think. Let me try to get something out of this. Just chip off the guard. Try to create another guard so that Lisa can John can't get in there. It's not a bad plan B. I think there's still room to get around though for John. What do you think, Dean? Or does he have to go to the other side? Is this, is this still John's shot? shot? Yeah. It'll be his last shot. Coming. That's right. He might be able to still get around there and corner freeze that. I think he could come zone. With, with either turn and get in there. Yeah. The only problem with playing the uh, intern side at this point is they haven't seen it. It sat, so it'd be pretty big guess. Yeah, he's still going out turn side here. Probably if that guard pops <coughs> pops off another six inches, he would have been forced to the intern side. Oh, John does not look happy. We did see, and, and that could happen there, we did see sometimes if you went out further into the 12 than you had seen, it's, it's also quite fresh and it swings off quite a bit harder off the, off the side. Yesterday I was saying swoop and James didn't like that. <laughs> Curls harder off the side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you just get into a little bit fresher. Like I said about the pass with mixed doubles, we really work hard those pass to the button. And then if you're inside that or outside that on a throw, it's really fresh and just see it take off. Yeah, at least three quarters of the throws are all coming down that same path. Exactly.
just a reminder, it is 3-0 uh, right now for Rana Rana in the second end. John and Lisa having hammer, and John and Lisa are red. Looks like they're sitting one right now. So this is Rana's, Isabella Rana's last shot. Man, I saw, I was watching both of these teams uh, a little bit this week, Dean, and Isabella made some amazing in-off shots. And, uh, you know, same with John, he just, his runbacks were just so dead on. Exactly where he wanted to hit it with the right flop it was just amazing. They put on a, put on a clinic this week for sure. Yeah, both teams have curled really well. There's been some exceptional curling to watch. Exactly. It's fun for the fans and and the curlers to have such good ice and be able to make those kind of shots. So we're going to have to go with the intern on this one. It's going to be the first shot thrown down this side. Yeah. I think you have to think probably, well, it depends, I guess, maybe, maybe four or five feet heavier. Because she doesn't have it, she doesn't have to go out into the full twelve, but it's still will, this side will have sat for you know at least an end. So and they only need full four; they don't need a piece of the button on this one. Just full four gets them second shot. Yeah. I expect her to be close here. As a, as a thrower to think like how much more do you need to throw there because you still want to have your sweeper in play. When you buy a lottery ticket in Saskatchewan, your money really goes a long way. More than 12,000 sport, culture, and recreation groups receive funding from Sask Lotteries every year. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel, because we're everywhere, keeping you connected to your family and friends, to your history and culture, to those traditions that make us who we are. Sastel cares, always has, always will, because we're dedicated to our home. So maybe it was just a little bit faster in the uh, LSD throws. And then sometimes what we see, if you're the only sheet out there, it's just a little bit different than you've seen through the week. So they just have to make a bit of an adjustment here, I think. And just think, throw it there. And, and uh, just a little more weight, I think. So we'll see. We'll see them adjust here. Got a stopwatch out here, so we'll see if we can get a time on this. Let's see if I can operate it correctly today. <laughs> I think throughout the week we were seeing about 14 and a half. I think we'd be yeah, pretty close. Exactly. Sometimes we're getting as as nice as 15-3, uh, but later in the in the game we were seeing it come down to about 14, 14-4. 14, so I was about a 14-7. So it's pretty the good there. Yeah. Although you did see him keep his broom down all the way through, so he probably swept it through the frost out there a little bit, if there was any. Got to be careful what I'm saying here because I'm sitting right next door, next to the uh, ice maker. So, <laughs> but but uh, no, the ice has been great all week. So 
Um, but we did get a lot of feedback from the teams. They were super happy with the ice and speed and curl, and you need that with mixed doubles. It's nice if you get some decent curls. So. Shout out here to our uh, sponsors, uh, First Nations Capital, and uh, it was our presenting sponsor, and then SGI was our supporting sponsor. Uh, Prairie Ice and Sastel um, were on board with the live stream. And uh, we've got a picture here of the uh, trophies that are going to be handed out, they're handmade by James. You can see the alley logo and the curling rock shape there, they're beautiful, so I'm super jealous. <laughs> Obviously these things can't happen without a, a volunteer committee here and uh, Dean's son was one of the key members of that uh, committee and I can tell you that I leaned on him a lot this summer. Dean, you probably <laughs> might have heard him complaining about me but I was on him all, all summer and most of the fall here. <laughs> but he was uh, amazing I definitely, uh, this wouldn't have run without all the volunteer people helping out. got some elephants running on the stairs above us here we're kind of in a closet underneath the stairs so once in a while we're we're not sure how much you can hear but it sounds like elephants okay so it's looking pretty good for blue right now looks like John uh, didn't get that one in there either it's gonna be if uh, Rasmus sinks this one it's gonna be tough tough sledding here for John and Lisa they might have to bail see a lot of rotation too, both from uh, both Ranaranas. Um, might be just, uh, I know John and Lisa have a little bit less rotation, so maybe that's what was catching them on the curl there. Yeah, that worked out pretty good for Rasmus there. The rocks are definitely taking slightly different paths with the rotation. Exactly. Well, we're going to need a good one. John will need a good one here to... Uh, Try to get out of this end. They don't want to give up a couple. They'd like to force them to one so you can get hammer and four. But Contact that was key there. Good one here from Rasmus, but and uh, put, the, put John and Lisa in tight here. So as I said, we had uh, 36 teams come out to this event, and it was a $600 entry fee and. Um, our prize purse was $32,000, so it was uh, pretty exciting to get those sponsors on board and have some really nice money for teams to play for. And then a little bonus for John and Lisa, who earlier today secured the spot to the Olympic Trials with their win in the semifinal. I mean, what a 14.75, so this should be top four, top button. Yeah, really nice shot by Rasmus there. Even got it half under, so. Decision point here for John and Lisa. John's shaking his head. He doesn't look happy. I don't know if he can hit what he can see there at all. We're going to still settle. I think this is uh, John's last shot here, so maybe 
maybe a freeze tap just to angle it back and create a pocket? What do you think, Dean? I kind of believe that's what he's doing. He's just tapping. Maybe we're going to have to just try to get out of the rings, too. a lot of those this week as well if we got anywhere near the four foot line again just because you're in that fresh area and just really grabs so we just had to take a little more ice than we thought we should and which which is awesome because you can make some really great shots with that with that kind of movement on the sheet just got to believe it and boy this is uh she might only have the run here on the right after this shot I think it's currently they're laying three. Yeah. John and Lisa are definitely going to want to get one in there, even if it's second or third shot. Yeah, from the overhead shot, you can see that they are laying, blue is laying three. Mm -hmm. So, Dean, why don't you tell us a little bit about the leagues you got going out here in Martinsville this year? We have a Tuesday, I think, uh, mixed, where you have to have... Uh, I think it's just one, one, of each. Mem one member of the opposite sex. Yeah. So you could come out with three women and a guy, or three guys and a girl. And I think you have one opening still on Tuesdays, I've heard. I believe so, yeah. That's right. And that's a 645 draw. And then uh, I think. Wednesdays is the men's league. Right. And then Thursdays is open, I think. I believe Thursdays is open, and I'm unsure of the availability, but I believe there's still openings. And then Friday, do you still have a family league, or not sure? James, is there a fr Friday league? Uh, Mondays. Mondays, okay. Or is open again. Oh, again, open on Mondays, yeah. And then uh, when do the juniors start here, James? Not till January? Usually it's in January when we yeah. start with the juniors. They have a really good junior program here. Mm -hmm. I've heard lots of good things about the junior program here. So That was a really good shot by the Rascals. Yeah, this is trouble. They're, uh, they're laying three, four, and the top three, and there's no way to get to Shot Rock, I don't think, unless they're playing off one of these side ones, and that is a difficult shot. Yeah, it looks like the, maybe the one on the left, the blue, might be the smarter call, just because you also get rid of one. If you come off it and into the yeah. one at the center there, you might have a chance. I think if it was John's shot, that's what he'd be playing, but now that it's Lisa, just, Lisa doesn't maybe throw quite as hard as what oh, John throws. Oh, I don't know. She, maybe not quite as hard, but boy, she can make some, yeah. I've seen her make some big in-offs on in mixed doubles. I think, I think they've gone to the side to try and play a little tap back here and maybe, maybe sit third shot after this. Make it difficult for him to try and remove that red to count out two of the blues, I think is the goal for this shot. Exactly. Are you trying to get the I think it's gonna be okay. I, I guess the depth Feeling a power play coming on here soon, uh, <laughs> Dean. Uh, I think even if she makes a really good one here, they they might want to change up the momentum just a little bit too and um, get some offensiveness going for themselves. Yeah, I agree. Something they just just change. having any luck with that shot. I've seen, I think that I've seen at least four or five over curls for John and Lisa, so either just the ice is just reacting a bit different or they're just not quite seeing it the same today. And as we talked before, I think they're throwing a little bit less rotation than what the, the run and two are, right? They're maybe taking the same similar ice mm -hmm. and just, yeah, catching that different path. Rock curling quicker. This is a draw for five. I definitely see a power play in the next end coming up. I, I would be shocked if we don't see a power play. So I was chatting with the Sweden team. They're heading flying home tomorrow. It's about a 24-hour trip door to door. So by the time they leave their hotel until they let, get to their own houses, it's about four hours from them, so it's a big commitment to come over here and play this event. We're super excited that it worked out for them to come over. Yeah, we had two teams from Sweden. There's a team from Australia and a team from the United States. Exactly. So we had some international flavor here as well as uh, 
super exciting for some of our juniors who came out and played as well. We had a couple under 18 teams and a couple under 21s and teams from all over Canada. Exactly. We had Ontario, Manitoba, Winnipeg. Okay, so that was a score of five. So we'll uh, be right back. Eight to one after three ends for the run. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we are everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. You are what matters most. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be a part of your community. From the dance competitions, to the rodeos, to helping discover and embrace technology across the province, we're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Every year, Sastel contributes nearly $3 million to approximately 1,000 nonprofits, charities, associations, and events in more than 200 communities across Saskatchewan. So keep dancing, keep laughing, keep discovering, and we'll be there to help, to lend a hand, and join in the fun. Sastel cares, always has, always will, because we are dedicated to our home. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Okay, we are back, Dean. Um, I, good thing I didn't put any money on this. We are not seeing the power play yet. <laughs> oh, there's lots of time. It's, only, it's early. It's still the fourth end. Oh, nice shot here by Bella. Yeah, she's been... Bang on with Yeah, those, taking hey? it right to them. So Lisa and John are always facing shot rock, it seems, every, every time they go to throw. Yeah. See if John and Lisa can put a little more pressure on this end and score a couple. Yeah, so she was short and overcurled a few, so then the adjustment, of course, is add a few extra feet, and then if you add too many, then it just doesn't grab and comes out looking worse than it probably was. It probably wasn't that much more, but... Yeah, for myself, um, if I'm in a game like this and the other team is just wrapping them, wrapping them, wrapping them, and I... I just sometimes like playing the power play early just to switch up the momentum. In fact, we were playing the uh, local junior team here. I think they're both 15. Um, our first game out, and uh, we had full control, and they played the power play in the fourth end, and I think they scored three on us in the fourth end. And I think they talked about that all weekend. They were pretty excited about that. So we didn't make anything, but the first three ends we were making everything, so they switched up the momentum. and. So, yeah, I think there's something to be said about that for sure. Sometimes you just want to shake it up a bit. So they did play a lot of draws on this uh, left-hand side of the sheet going the other way. So now you've seen both teams come up heavy there and could just be that much crisper over there now, nice and well. Yeah, they've still got lots of opportunity to try and get this to the top four. Red throws probably, maybe even top thrown off to give themselves a little bit of scoring room. Yeah, I think he, if he can get to the face and release it, that would be ideal, but it's, it's not the easiest shot, obviously. She was looking for a perfect weight. Yeah. Typically, what do they take when you're throwing on this? What, four feet, four and a half feet of curl? Or you're taking the edge of uh, eight? Or yeah, outside edge most, of eight? most of the game, right about where uh, Isabella has it right now, is where I was thinking. Um, I don't throw with a broom, so um, that's pretty close to where I'd like to hit. And of course, when I have no broom, I never miss the broom. So. <laughs> Just going to say that makes it much easier not to miss the broom. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, and every team kind of handles it differently. Um, I, for myself, I, I've tried where I'll sweep, and obviously I'm not the sweeper that Tyrell is, so that's one factor. And then the other factor is I really like to 
be in the house and see those rocks coming at me so that when I go to throw my last rock, I have a visualization of I've seen the past, I kind of understand what it's doing, where it's breaking. Um, and I just found when I tried to sweep, I felt very out of touch of what was happening with the line. So um, for me, that, that just didn't work. But you'll see different combinations for sure. Um, do you see Lisa sweep John's rock? Um, and our team, I don't do any sweeping, so Tyrell does pretty much all the sweeping unless he's throwing a peel weight shot. And then I'll get up just to kind of, you know, clean it in. <laughs> yeah. you, you tend to see that with a lot of the mixed teams that the guys tend to do the majority of the sweeping. Now there's some teams that definitely the female partner does some of the sweeping depending on who the participant might be or what position maybe they play on their own women's team or men's team. Yeah, exactly. So for me, I play third, and so, you know, I'm not the powerhouse, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, some of the teams, I know I was talking to some of the women who do sweep uh, quite a bit of the rocks, and they said for them, um, they feel less involved if they're not sweeping. So it's, again, it's it's really comfort level of each player, which is which really unique and kind of cool about mixed doubles is you can kind of switch it up and see what works for you. I did play with uh, Jason Jacobson in a local event uh, here a couple years ago, and Jason um, didn't like getting up to sweep his own. He said he felt like he couldn't just trust his throw then, so in that case, I did sweep all weekend, and I almost died. <laughs> we played three or four games on the last day, and oh my goodness, by the last game, I was ready to flip a coin. I just was dead. <laughs> so. It's definitely a more challenging game with just two of you on there. Right? Yeah, it's your more, exactly. You're involved every shot, for sure, whereas if sometimes if you have two sweepers, you can, I'm kind of taking this one off, and your other sweeper can get it. Yeah, for whereas sure. You don't have the option on this one. There's only two of you. Yeah, it's two people doing the job of four, really, and so there's lots of things to consider, the paths and the line, and did I get that there, was I soft with the release, and you're not getting any of that feedback from your skip, and I find especially the, you know, a bump weight shot or a control weight shot, just that last few feet, it sure would be nice to have a skip in the house so you can really see the angle. That was a beautiful shot right in there. That's going to be difficult to get rid of. for first place and six thousand dollars for the runner-up in this out of the out of the total that was the thirty-two thousand payout. Yeah, so our um, semi-finalists, or I guess it would be quarter-finalists. Hey, third and fourth got three thousand, and then uh, our top eight teams, uh, fifth to eighth. Yes. Yeah, fifth to eighth would have got two thousand, and then our uh, nine to twelve was a thousand. Oh, I think it's slightly better, but not quite what John was hoping, but now at least he can run his own red in. see the score here right now it's uh, we're in the fourth end and John and Lisa have hammer and it's uh, eight to one for Rana Rana. I believe it looks like they're maybe trying to pick out this red one to make them be facing four or five. Mm -hmm. This is the last blue rock of the fourth end. I had a game like this earlier, uh, it was yesterday, we were playing the U.S. team and uh, I think we were losing by about the same here. And then we came over to play playoffs and we faced them again, so lost in the extra, which wasn't quite as bad as the first game, but it never feels good to lose the same team twice, but they made a lot of shots out there and we just weren't sharp, so it's the way she goes sometimes.
think they'd switched and maybe gone with the decision to put this just top four, I think. Yeah. Kind of so in the, in the semifinal, we had Rana Rana playing the other Sweden team, uh, Deval Eriksson. And then uh, we had uh, John and Lisa uh, were playing Catlin and his uh, girlfriend, Jen Armstrong. So we had an all Canadian semi and an all Sweden semi. One side. That's going to make it very, very difficult to score. Yeah, she's going to have to. Uh, I'm not sure even here if she can score. I think they've decided that that's enough. Yeah, that's enough, I guess. Okay, well, that was a short one, but uh, <laughs> thanks to all the volunteers and Martinsville Curling Club and Sutherland Curling Club and the Ice Makers. Uh, it was a great event here and a shout out to all our sponsors. Um, it's been just an amazing week and uh, we sure hope to do it again next year. We uh, have in the back of our minds potentially uh, bringing in arena ice as well for one at uh, maybe Warman. So uh, we we'll look forward to seeing everybody back here next year and we'll congratulations goes out to Rana Rana for a great final. Get your tickets now at curling.ca. Saskatchewan, you know Sastel. Because we're everywhere. Keeping you connected. To your family and friends. To your history and culture. To those traditions that make us who we are. Sastel cares. Always has, always will, because we're dedicated to our home. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, font spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next curling stadium.
Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. You are what matters most. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be a part of your community. From the dance competitions, to the rodeos, to helping discover and embrace technology across the province. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Every year, SASTEL contributes nearly $3 million to approximately 1,000 nonprofits, charities, associations, and events in more than 200 communities across Saskatchewan. So keep dancing, keep laughing, keep discovering, and we'll be there to help, to lend a hand, and join in the fun. SASTEL cares, always has, always will, because we are dedicated to our home. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. When you buy a lottery ticket in Saskatchewan, your money really goes a long way. More than 12,000 sport, culture, and recreation groups receive funding from Sask Lotteries every year. 